Over 500 million people live beneath these majestic skies. There are also over a million known species floating above their heads. And now, perhaps something unknown. It has been seen in the skies over the California coast, the lush Pacific Northwest, the deserts of Arizona, and craggy limestone peaks of Mexico. It was something alive. It was not a robot. It was not it was like more like a like a being, like an entity. Um, bulky, uh, dark, slate grey in colour, and it was just coming straight towards us. It had some sort of feet, an arm, and it was simply hanging. It didn't move at all. It was floating. Eyewitnesses report seeing large, human-like creatures floating or flying hundreds of feet above them. Most appear to be wingless, and some are covered with a kind of cape or hard exterior suit. The beings hover or glide silently through the air. Police reports refer to the sightings as unidentified flying humanoids. The witnesses question whether the floating objects are natural, man-made, or the manifestation of a more mysterious phenomenon. But one police officer believes that they're very real. I start to follow it, and to my surprise, I run into a creature that terrified me. Officer Leonardo Samaniego was tailing a robbery suspect on the streets of Monterey when he had an experience that still haunts his dreams. I see something like a black bag falling down on me when I pass under the tree. I step on the brakes and see a silhouette. Samaniego quickly realized it was something unimaginable. When it stands up in front of me, I stop the car and, first of all, try to make out what it is. What he saw appeared female, but didn't seem human. She starts to hide from the light. She closed her eyes. She had completely black eyes, but I couldn't see any eyelids or anything. She does this and then quickly turns to face me. I can see that the hat she's wearing goes down like this, as if it were tied down. When she comes down on her back, she doesn't touch the ground and she's like this with her arms open. She comes down and that's when I ask for backup. Samaniego frantically radioed for help as the creature ominously floated towards him, ready to attack. She starts walking. I put the car in reverse. When I arrive at the street corner, I hear her crash against the windshield. And then I see her like this, and I move back, scared. I didn't know what to do. Samaniego was knocked unconscious by the flying creature during his encounter. Later, another officer found me and woke me up. They say that she slapped me three times. I don't know. I wasn't aware of anything then. For many months afterwards, the memory of this creature's face gave the officer nightmares. Still, every night, I was dreaming about those eyes. With my eyes closed, I could still see her gaze and her face, all of this and her eyes. Her eyes were very present and very, very black. I used to get scared, and I used to wake up scared and crying. Asustado, llorando. Even more shocking than Samaniego's account 
is the fact that there may be video evidence to prove it. In the skies above Santa Monica, California, a bulky humanoid shape is reported floating over this wealthy Los Angeles suburb. Here, a dark human-like form is seen above craggy peaks near Monterey, Mexico, close to San Diego's encounter. Further to the south in Mexico City, several airborne humanoids are filmed drifting above this metropolis of 22 million people. This strange phenomenon has been reported across North America with similar objects reported in the skies above Arizona, Wisconsin, and Washington State. This video footage will be examined and analyzed by MonsterQuest using sophisticated forensic techniques. But some experts are skeptical that the video is even real. When I first hear, hear about uh, flying humanoids, of this kind, uh, my thought is it's hard to distinguish it from a hoax. Joe Nickel, a researcher of unexplained phenomena, says that if the videos aren't hoaxes, then the only explanation could be misidentification. The other possibility is that it's very lightweight, um, perhaps helium-filled uh, craft, such as you would get from um, a balloon or a cluster of balloons. Nickel will only be convinced by hard proof and the evidence that may already exist in the form of a corpse found in Metepec, just 32 miles southwest of Mexico City. Now MonsterQuest will launch an investigation into this bizarre phenomenon. The expedition team has traveled to Monterey, Mexico, the location of many of the sightings of the flying humanoid creatures. Well, the nation of Mexico is a very magical and mysterious place. Ken Gerhard, an author from Texas, will lead the search in the location of Officer Sam Diego's spine-chilling encounter. Uh, whatever he encountered that night uh, was very real to him. Um, so my impression is that uh, Leonardo did have some type of encounter with a non-human entity, if you will. It's also interesting to note that many other people in the neighborhood of Guadalupe had reported a similar type of creature flying around. Uh, and in fact, police officers came forward after the fact, uh, saying that they had also seen this being. All the eyewitness descriptions that he's reviewed point to a creature that is completely unknown to man. There's, there's an apparent lack of wings and all of the animals that we recognize in science, birds, bats, or what have you, uh, of course they rely on wings and constant motion and inertia to remain airborne. That we can't rule out the possibility that we could be dealing with something beyond our realm of understanding. Interdimensional beings, if you will. In a rugged canyon outside of Monterey, the team will search for traces of an unknown presence. The area is surrounded by a massive limestone mountain range, which is riddled with caves. Monterey is very, very interesting because of the location, because it is sort of pocketed and surrounded by these, these craggy peaks and mountains and mountainous areas. Um, and there are legends and reports that go back here centuries. Gerhard has enlisted Marco Reynoso, a local investigator, and Sergio Estavio, a wilderness guide, to help him. Yes. This is, of course, Monterey. Geographically speaking, what are we looking at here as far as what do we have in terms of these surrounding mountains, caves, and so forth? What is the, the lay of the land, so to speak? Yes, here we, we have a, the Cerro de las Mitras. Uh -huh. It's a mountain where you can find different mines and caves. Mm -hmm. This part here we have El Cerro de la Silla, mm -hmm. is the light. Uh, Reynoso has collected details of numerous local sightings of humanoid creatures. Uh, I have uh, many reports of uh, other policemen in the uh, Santa Catarina River, and other reports in other zone uh, Apodaca County. Shortly after beginning their search, the team meets a local rancher who tells them about unusual aerial activity. 
que bajan hasta cerca de, de donde donde viene la gente porque they do come down close to where people are because a short while ago in the hills of Guitarrita some members of my family were around and a UFO came down I've seen them over there and they've come down there by the Guitarrita they've never harmed anybody but people are shocked and get scared It is believed by locals that the creatures are nocturnal cave dwellers. As a result, Gerhard has outfitted the team with night vision equipment and targeted a cave 5,000 feet above sea level to start the search. Caves have been very, very good in terms of discoveries of different types of fossils cave paintings. These were, of course, the, you know, habitations for thousands of years of the early indigenous peoples all over the world, uh, as well as animals. Uh, any type of animal might seek refuge in a cave. Uh, they're excellent hiding places. The team reaches the opening and enters the limestone caves. If there were any type of undiscovered animal or creature, uh, whether it be a gigantic form of bat, uh, a surviving a pterosaur from our prehistoric past, uh, they would need a place to hide. Looks like there might be some different passageways and things up here ahead. 200 yards into the cave, something captures Ken's imagination. There's one very strange looking sort of shape or formation. And I get a very, very eerie feeling being down in this cave. Monster Quest is searching for unidentified flying humanoids, known to aggressively attack people. Ken Gerhard believes the same extraordinary phenomenon may have been witnessed centuries ago by North America's earliest civilizations. Within the different legends and folklores of Mexico, we find many references to these flying humanoids or winged humanoid type creatures. Specifically here in the mountains around Monterey, we hear reports of the legends of the Birdman, which is described as a, a humanoid figure with, of course, the wings, talons, and other characteristics of a bird. Mayan legends tell of hybrid creatures that stalked local villages. There's the Camazots, or Zots, the death bat. And uh, this is depicted in Maya engravings as a anthropomorphic creature with the body of a man and the head of a bat. And it's often associated with sacrifice and death. Many believe some of these bizarre mythological creatures had extraterrestrial origins. We have all of these references uh, to, the, to the gods from the skies, if you will, uh, visiting the early indigenous peoples of Mexico. But we have these links to possible alien visitations, UFOs, that date back to the Maya. In the 1940s and 50s, accounts began to emerge.